We're looking at example 7 on page 341. And I've explained to you in the lesson that present value is different from future value. Future value is the amount of money that you will have in, at some future point in time. Present value is the money that you're starting with, but you don't know what it is that you're starting with. So we've got a formula on page 341. And it is this. Let's see, P for present value, not principal, but they're kind of the same thing. So present value, one plus I raised to the capital N. And um, just so that you know, I, and if you look in your book, it tells you this on page 341, I is equal to R over N, and remember that R is your interest rate, and N is the number of times it's compounded in a year. So you could, let's just erase this right here, and we're going to put R over lowercase n right there. And N is actually NT, the number of times compounded in a year, times the years. So we're going to erase that so that we have a whole different formula now. It looks like this. Now, if we look at our problem, it says, suppose you want to take a trip to Tahiti in five years and you decide that you will need $5,000. So this money, $5,000, is what you need in the future. So that is really, that's your future value. To have that much money set aside in five years, how much money should you deposit into a bank account paying 6% compounded quarterly? So they're asking you, you know, how much do you need in the present in order to get $5,000 in the future? So they're asking you for the present value. So present value is equal to A stands for future value over 1 plus interest rate of 6%, number of times compounded in a year. It is compounded quarterly. That's four times in a year. Raised to the NT, so four times, and we want to do it in five years. So this number is actually 20. Now we have to be really, really careful when we're doing these things on our calculator. So what you're going to want to do, and if you'll follow along with me as you do this, make sure that you get the right values. You're going to do 0 0.06 divided by 4. That's the first part you're going to do. We're following the order of operations, so we're going to do what's in parentheses first. And we're going to get 0 0.015. That's for this piece. So then we add the 1 and we get 1.015. That's the part that we want to raise to the 20th power. So you need to find on your calculator where the exponential button is, and it looks like this. So we're going to hit that arrow, and we're going to put 20 in there. And so for the bottom, you should get 1.34, and then you're going to get 68550007. Now, Depending on how many decimal places you round to, your answer may be a little different than what's in the back of the book or what they get in the book. So I'm going to round to, let's see, I'm going to put the 6 and then I'm going to put the 9. I'm going to round to four decimal places just to be as accurate as I possibly can. So you need to make sure that you can get that on your calculator. We still have the 5,000 on the top, so we're going to take 5,000 divided by 1.3469 and I get 3712.23 so if I take $3,712.23 and I put it in a bank account at 6% compounded quarterly at the end of those five years I will have $5,000 so this is the present value. This is what you hope to start with in order to get a future value of $5,000. Probably the hardest part for you will be making sure that you 
actually get the correct numbers punched in correctly on your calculator. So again, pause the video, go back through it, pause the video, and make sure that you can get these figures, as I told you, to punch them in the calculator correctly. And also make sure that you add this formula to your formula sheet and that you know that this P stands for present value and this A stands for future value.